All right, guys, welcome. Today we're going to be doing our next recipe, which is with sauce velote. Sauce velote is our fourth mother sauce here, and it is a white stock thickened with white roux. So uh, we already made our white stock here, and that's what we're going to be using here today. All right, so uh, firstly, um, we're going to be doing a chicken pot pie with this. Um, so the ingredients are two uh, chicken breast uh, pieces here, uh, a tablespoon of oil. You can use any type here. Just make sure it's a uh, high smoke point oil. Do not use extra virgin. Um, we've got kosher salt right here. Now, as far as flavorings, you can go with any uh, sort of flavorings that you want here. I'm going to be going with black pepper and a couple of different spices. You can choose what you want. Uh, again, I'm using black pepper, parsley. Uh, I also have to just look through my spice cabinet and see what else I'd like to put in there. Um, I've got two and a half cups of white stock. Um, now that is 20 ounces. Now, if you do not have a white stock already made, no worries. You can use the carton. Um, however, homemade stuff is significantly better. All right. For the roux, I'm going to need three tablespoons, or sorry, six tablespoons, which is three ounces of unsalted butter. Again, do not use shortening or margarine. And I've got equal weight, three ounces of flour. Um, okay, put that to the side. Um, oh, three ounces is going to be about, you know, about eight tablespoons or half a cup. Again, estimate. Um, got one onion, one carrot, which I do need to peel, uh, one stalk of celery to make our mirepoix, one eighth of a cup, or sorry, one fourth of a cup, which is two ounces of heavy cream. Now, as far as what vegetables you use, uh, you can use any vegetables that you want. I'm going to be going here with frozen corn and frozen peas just because those are uh, vegetables that are pretty inexpensive, cheap to find. Now, I'm going to be going with frozen. Now, nothing wrong with that. Um, frozen, the vegetables are fully cooked already, and you just need to reheat them. You can customize this with any vegetable that you want, just so long as it's cooked. Okay? You're going to need about a cup of it. Uh, one of my personal favorites for this is chopping up, uh, slicing some mushrooms, sauteing that in some butter or roasting that, and then just cutting that up into pieces and putting it into the, uh, into the pot pie here. Uh, but again, you decide what you want to do, okay? Um, and then I have uh, one pie crust. Again, I'm going to be using a store-bought here. Not going to take the time uh, to go through all that to make a pie crust. And then you're going to need, for the crust, one egg. All right. Okay. So uh, first step here is you're going to want to re or preheat your oven to 200 or sorry, 425 degrees. Okay. That's your first step here to uh, get that going. Um, also, before we go any further, as far as what you use to bake this in, okay, I'm going to be using individual little ramekins here to bake this in. If you don't have these, no worries. Uh, just you can use any oven proof cup. If you don't have that, you can use muffin tins, though it might be a little bit more difficult to uh, serve. Um, and if you don't have that, then you can just use a regular pie plate. Just take one of the crusts, just roll that out, put that on the bottom, fill it up with your chicken pot pie filling, and then put another crust right on top. Okay. But for me, I'm going to be doing individual portions. Okay, put that to the side. Um, all right, next step here is I'm going to dice up the chicken here. Now, easiest way to do this is to just kind of slice the chicken, butterfly it, just like what we did for the chicken parm. Taking my knife, just putting it right in between, going through, opening it up like a book, slicing it into two pieces here. Uh, here, let me just put this one to the side so I have some room. And then from here, I'm going to just cut this into long strips. Remember to curl your fingers, don't have your hand like this. Just 
print. I'm going to take the strips, turn it 90 degrees, and then just dice right through. And you can have the pieces that are as big or as small as you'd like. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a bowl. And using clean hands, I'm going to season this with kosher salt and any spices I'd like to use. For me, for chicken, I really like the flavor of paprika. A little bit of garlic powder. I'm not measuring this, I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. And some pepper. And then I'll just mix that together. All right. So, so far on your mise en place sheet, you've got preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Then you've got uh, dice your chicken with kosher salt and pepper and other flavorings. And then what we're going to do is we're going to saute it. So I've got my pan charging with heat here. I'm just going to add in the oil. So my heat is on medium high right now, and I'm going to saute this. Put that right in. You should hear it sizzle right away. Now from here, oh, hold on. All right, sorry about that. All right, from here, I'm just going to cook this all the way through. Now, I'm just going to be flipping this way. You can stir it around however you want. All right, so my chicken's almost cooked all the way through, so I'm just going to turn off the heat and just let this sit to the side. In the meantime, I'm going to prep my vegetables. All right, so just going a quick review over some basic knife skills here. So here I've got a bowl for my, my uh, vegetables to go in once they're cut, and i got a scrap bowl right here just to keep everything nice and organized. All right, first vegetable I'm going to do is I'm going to finely dice. Okay, hold on. Is the brightness going to stay? All right, good. All right, so the next step here is you're going to finely dice your mirepoix here. So for the onion, I'm going to slice the root end, or sorry, the stem end off. The root end is here where you see all the little fibers coming out of it. Okay, I'm going to put that over the side here. Then going to slice straight down and then just quickly peel that. The way you do that is you just find the corner here and you just peel off the top layer. Make sure you're getting all the paper. All right, from here you want to keep your fingers curled and you're going to slice not fully through the onion. Okay, you want to keep the onion together just a little bit. Okay, and you're just going to go all the way down the onion, same thing here, okay, keeping my fingers curled. Okay. Then from here you'll see the onion stays together even though it's definitely sliced. And from here I'm just going to make one cut right through the center and one cut kind of near the top. So same thing, so one cut. Right down the center, one cup just uh, or one cut just right there. Then from there, I'm just going to chop really finely. You'll see my dice will be really really fine. Now, if you want your onions a little bit bigger, no worries. You can just make the uh, the spaces in between your cuts a little bit larger. No biggie. Again, this is a chicken pot pie. It's not. No not fine cuisine at the Ritz. You know, simple here. All right. Now, that's my onion right there. Whew, I can feel it in my eyes. All right. 
next vegetable here is much simpler. You have a stalk of celery. So just, you're just going to top and tail it, which is just cutting off both ends. And I'm going to cut the celery into just two manageable pieces here. From here, I'll just slice that in half. I'll slice this into thirds, the bottom half here. Okay. And then from there, I'll just cut right through. And keeping my fingers curled, my thumb peeled back. For those of you who are cooking in person, this uh, this slide will definitely test your knife skills. Okay, let me go ahead and get this into my bowl here. Okay. Okay, now for the carrot, you want to top and tail that. Now carrots are a little trickier because as you go down them, they get a little thinner as, as uh, it goes down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut into two pieces. I have my thicker end here and a little thinner end here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut that in half and then cut this into thirds. So I'm just going to cut it into Thin little matchsticks, almost like a batonet. So cut, turn, cut. There you go, batonet. Or rough batonet. Okay. Same thing here. I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna judge, okay, you know, should I cut this in thirds or cut this in half? Uh, this one I'll cut into thirds as well, just make it a little finer. Here. Then from there, I'll just turn it sideways and then cut this finely. All right. Now, also to this, this is just a personal preference here. I'm also going to just thinly slice some garlic so I have the root end right there. I'm just going to trim that and then just slice that right through. And there we have our mirepoix. Uh, onions, carrots, and celery. And this is the flavor base of most stocks. Uh, definitely a lot of soups here, and this is what we're going to be using today. All right, so now what we're going to do on the same step is we're going to sweat this in butter and season it with kosher salt. Okay, I'm going to show that step right now. All right, so the big difference between sweating and sauteing, we're going to be sweating the vegetables here is it's the same concept as sauteing, but where sauteing is on very high heat and is meant to brown foods, sweating is on a more low heat, and it's meant to just soften, uh, soften foods and just bring out some of their sweeter flavors and also render out some of the water in them. So I'm gonna take my butter here, and it should not sizzle right away. It should just kinda slowly start to melt. All right, so once that has melted, I'll add my vegetables here. Okay, so most of my butter is melted. I'm gonna add in my vegetables. And you probably noticed right away that it's not really sizzling. That's perfect. It's exactly what you want when it comes to sweating vegetables. I'm gonna turn that onto about medium, low heat. And then I'm going to add in a good pinch of kosher salt. Now it's important to season your vegetables when they first go in. The reason why is because salt will draw out water that is in the vegetables. Without it, um, the everything would take a little bit longer to cook. And also it's a good idea to always season your food in stages. So um, I'll be back in about five to 10 minutes or so here when this is finished cooking.
All right, so my vegetables have been cooking down for a little bit. The, the lower and slower that you can take this, the better, um, but that's completely up to you. All right, now um, my next step here is I'm going to make my roux. So I'm going to add the flour into this. Now, because there's vegetables in here, it's gonna dry up pretty quickly. So the roux is actually gonna be coating the vegetables. That's fine. Um, all you need to do is just put the flour in and cook it for just like a minute. Okay, again, a velote is a white roux, so you don't really want to cook this very much. All right, so I'll just let the flour coat all the vegetables. Just cook that for about a minute or so, just to toast a little bit of the flour. So, okay, definitely smelling good already. All right, now I'm going to switch over to a whisk. And I'm going to slowly add in the stock and the cream into this. So on step, uh, step five, once the vegetables are done, you're going to sprinkle in the flour, as well as any other seasonings that you're going to use. I'm going to be adding pepper and dry herbs and stuff, but for now, I'm just worrying about the flour. And the next part is going, you're going to slowly add in your stock. So there's the white stock, just a little bit at a time. Okay, this will avoid lumps in the sauce. See, it's already starting to loosen up. Okay, I still have the pan on about medium heat here. And then I'll just add pretty much the rest of it, or almost the rest of it. At first, it doesn't look like it's going to come together. Just keep whisking, keep stirring. Add the rest of my stock. Add the cream, just for richness and mouthfeel. And then stir that together. All right, ready? That looks nice and delicious. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put up my heat back to a medium high, just to simmer this and just let the sauce thicken. So you're going to uh, simmer the sauce until it's thickened about five to 10 minutes. Again, you wanna get rid of some of that you know, raw flour taste. Here I'm adding some dried herbs. I'm also going to add a pretty generous amount of black pepper that's just what I prefer. All right, so I'm just gonna let that cook on about medium heat, let that simmer just for a little bit. If you're in a little bit of a rush, you can uh, put the heat to high. Uh, you're just gonna need to stir it uh, quite a bit. All right, so I'll be back in about five minutes. All right, while the filling is cooking here, I'm going to roll out my pie crust. Now, for those of you who are doing this in person, delegate your work here. As one person's taking care of the filling, one person can be taking care of the chicken, one person can be taking care of the pie crust. This is definitely gonna be a teamwork uh, recipe. So, I'm going to just pre-cut the circles I'm gonna put on top of the pie crust. So I'm going to unroll this, put it on a little bit of flour here. And then just, I'm going to just very lightly roll this out. Not too much. Okay, I just want to thin it out just a tiny bit. Maybe give it just like a roll, just a little bit in each direction. Okay, now from there, I'm going to take my bowl and I'm going to cut a circle approximately the size of the opening. Okay, now for me, I have a pastry cutter here. So I'm just going to cut four circles, so one, two, three, four. Now, if I want to make smaller ones, I'd have plenty of dough for that. And there we go, there is my four circles. You can reuse the rest of this, you can just knead it back together and then roll out your uh, other crust. Or, like I said, if you do not have little dishes or ramekins here, you can use a pie plate. All right, from here, I'm going to add in my cooked vegetables into the sauce, stir that in, as well as 
the cooked chicken. Oops, hold on. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know why that keeps happening. And I'm going to add in also my cooked chicken with the juices and all, since all that flavor from the drippings is going to really help this out. All right, I'm just going to simply stir that together. If your vegetables are frozen, just wait until they are heated through. And I'm also going to add in some chopped parsley into this. Now, I decided to just go with one chicken breast here. I think two would just been a little too much here. Uh, a good uh, Popeye has kind of like a balance to everything, so uh, I just decided to go with one. All right, so I'm going to stir that together. Already that's looking pretty good. Um, an important step here is you want to stir it together and taste it, okay? It's, again, probably going to need something. It may need more salt. It may need a little more spices. Also, be sure to taste for acidity here. Um, really good additions here are vinegar and lemon juice, okay? Vinegar here and lemon juice. I've got both ready to go, and I can decide which one I want to go with. So let me just go ahead, just take a quick, a quick taste, try to get both the vegetables and the meat in there. All right, so for me, that was pretty close. I'm going to add in a lot more black pepper, um, some salt, and I'm just going to squeeze half of a lemon into this just for acidity. Again, when, by the way, when I add acid in the form of lemon juice, I'm not shooting for making it taste, you know, like a lemony chicken pot pot. That's not the point of acid. Acid is there just to simply, you know, add to cut through some richness, cut through some fat, and also to kind of just brighten up flavors, okay? You're not shooting to make something taste, you know, lemony. Just in the same that you're not trying to add salt to make something taste salty. You just want to add enough just to season the food all the way through. All right, using a new spoon here. Okay, much better. All right. Now we go to our next step. All right, so I got my pie crust lids here, and I've got my ramekins here. So from here, I'm just going to fill each one of these up with my filling. Go with a ladle here in each one. So you can see for our sauce velote, now here we're using the velote as more of a binding agent as a gravy sauce for all this. So, again, that's what's great about the mother sauces, is that they can be doctored up just a little bit, and you can create hundreds, if not thousands, of different dishes using them. So, okay, so I've got these filled up. I'm going to add in my pie crust on the top here. Now you probably notice I have a little bit over the edge that, or it's not completely covering the top. Again, that is a personal preference. I kind of want that first bite to have contrasting textures. So like I was saying, I don't cover it all the way. I just like having the contrasting textures on the top. And then what I'm going to do is my last step here is I'm going to brush it with the beaten egg. Here's an egg wash. It's just one egg beaten with a teaspoon of water. And I'm just going to simply brush that over the top of each pie crust. What this does is that the extra protein and moisture will help the uh, will help the top of the crust get browned and have a nice glaze to it. So just brush that over the top. I'm going to season the top of each of those with a little bit black pepper and I just personally like that and I'm going to add it on a little more kosher salt right at the end okay from there we're gonna bake this into the oven um, in for about 45 minutes or until the top crust is nice and golden brown it may take more time or less time depending on your oven All right here we go All right, and here we go. So they are done. Last step here is let them cool. You cannot eat these while they are screaming hot. 
Uh, they are like lava right now. I will admit, in hindsight, uh, looking at this, I probably should have made the crust all the way uh, larger and put it over the top, but that's okay. Um, all right, that is our lab here. Definitely let these cool, like I said, at least, you know, 10, 15, not 20 minutes. Um, trust me, they'll retain their heat really, really well. All right, uh, if you have any questions for me, uh, let me know. Um, I will let you guys work and uh, just let me know if you have any questions.